live from OPN World Broadcasting Headquarters. <laughs> we bring to you the A to Z live call in show. Dun da da! Good evening, everybody. Welcome to OPN. Hello, everybody. Welcome to OPN. Um, we're trying out a little sound effects there. Uh, maybe next week when I'm mixing, I'll actually uh, do do something a little bit better than that. Um, like real, real yeah, like Morse real. code or whatever? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was just kind of making it up. I was doing the Prairie Home Companion style of sound effects. And, uh, you know, poor, poor Zena had to tolerate it because she's producing again tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And I want you to pay particular attention to the off awesome graphic design um, as we go through the segments. Um, the way we do this is these days is with XSplit. And um, so whichever one of us is producing, the other one sends in material so it becomes the, you know, the producer's job to assemble it. And uh, Zena has yet again made me look bad. So good job on that. <laughs> Graphics are my forte. That's what I love to do. <laughs> Graphics are your forte. Hey, you know what? I should, uh, I should actually be looking at this at this channel too so I can see when the graphics come up. Hang on just a second. And we're probably yeah, going to get... Yeah, they're up. Yeah, well, I'm, but I'm not on the channel, so... Um, I'm going to dial down so you guys don't have to listen to the to the uh, advertisement, so just kind of go ahead and welcome everybody, and I'll be right back on in a second. Okay. Well, guys, we're here, and our first segment is Words Matter, Reclaiming Our Language, and... Art is going to be the one that is um, taking the segment. Um, so as soon as he's done getting the live stream up so he can take a look at what's going on, we'll get started. <coughs> tell a joke. Oh, don't put me on the spot like that. I can't tell jokes. I'm no good at jokes. And any jokes I know are like really bad and offensive, so I'm not gonna tell any jokes. I, I could really offend somebody with the jokes that I know. Oh, rise. Rise, do you have a joke for us? Okay. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. I, I just wanted okay. to, I like to look at the pretty graphics, and it, I forget that when I'm not producing, I have to look at the channel, so um, thank you for your patience, and uh, I want to say thanks to the uh, other channels that are uh, mirroring us tonight, Occupy World News Now, and um, Global, and whoever else that might have us up, we appreciate your continuing support, and uh, your willingness to put us up on on your channels. Um, and while I'm thinking of OWNN, Occupy World News Now, uh, I want to give them a plug so I don't forget it as we rush to the end. Um, Occupy World News Now is uh, doing a news program four times daily, and I encourage everybody to watch that. Um, and clearly, if you could put up the, the time for the Occupy World News Now news shows again, that would be outstanding. Uh, thank you, Northern Guy, and uh, we hope we give you guys something uh, worth worth watching tonight. So, without any further ado, we're going to talk about how words matter and reclaiming our language. And I came up with the idea for this piece from um, suffering through yet another one of those debates which um, I characterized it as it seemed to me to be like two teenage schoolgirls in the recess yard arguing about mascara color. Um, it was yet another, another e example of how it can be kind of embarrassing to be an American. Um, those guys were out in front, you know, Support supposedly representing the best 
that America has to offer, and it was pretty distressing. So in listening to them discuss, and in our own conversations, we have all these words flying around. Um, it's occurred to me, after having a lot of conversations with other people, that a lot of times we use them especially as labels, and we don't really know what they mean. and Or we have an idea, but we're still using them incorrectly. And I think words matter because what we see and what we hear and what we say matters. It changes how we think and who we are. Um, I think language and images have been hijacked by advertising and mainstream media, and they're used against us in in every way. So I wanted to get some uh, input on that. And you can see on the little scrolling sidebar in there that, you know, I just threw a few words up. Um, you know, liberal and conservative, what, do you, what does it mean when you hear that word or when you read that label? What picture do you have in your mind? Anarchists and fascists, fascists. Um, what does that mean? What is a job creator? How is it used? How is the word security leveraged against us? What is the 99%? We use that all the time, but what does that really mean? And is it truly 99%? Um, the definitions of different political systems. Also, what is equality and what is justice and how is that measured? So let's... Um, get some weigh-ins on that, on reclaiming language, and maybe some examples that you have noticed in the, uh, I don't know, in the media and in common day, everyday use. I think one of my favorites is anarchist, because when you say the word anarchist, you get a, you know, you most people get an image in their mind. And uh, I reference back to Sunday afternoon show with the Firestorm Cafe Collective, and all of those guys are self-admitted anarchists. And you have to say, probably not the picture people get in their mind when you hear the word anarchist. Um, well, this is a call-in yeah. show. It would be more interesting if people <laughs> called in. <laughs> well, and two, I think that you know certain words have different connotations depending on you know how they've been used so anarchist can bring up a whole lot of different things for people um, because it's been used in such a negative way um, in our media and in our learning actually I think I learned what an anarchist was in school and it was like you know no rule all anything goes no you know no structure no um, you no know, personal responsibility. Yeah, just kind of chaos. People just doing whatever they want, whenever they want, and hurting people or stealing or doing all of these bad things. So, I mean, people get that when they hear the word. Also, another word is uh, revolution, because for some people, revolution can mean violence, a violent overthrow. Um, when it doesn't necessarily need to mean that. Yep. Um, another one I thought of was was defense. You know, um, the defense budget, defense spending. We do stuff in defense of our country. We do stuff to defend you from you know from evil. When the reality of it is, a lot of these things are offensive. Um, you cannot deny that that our military budget is an offensive military budget. Offensive in every way, shape, and form. It offends the sensibility. It offends the people it's perpetrated against. It is used as a tactically offensive, you know, mechanically offensive. Um, good evening, Andy. Glad you're, you're here for this. We're talking about the, um, the reclaiming of language. Um, in my current favorite, Ten, tends to be the job creator. Um, <laughs> you hear, yeah, you hear these guys. They're like, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, we're gonna create jobs. We're gonna create job. You know, we're gonna create 12 million jobs. I mean, both sides of the equation are all about the job creation, and the job creators. Who, who are they? 
where are they? I think they're in the mythical unicorn land because <laughs> if those jobs are there, why aren't they being, you know, why aren't they being manifested? You're going to just create them out of thin air. You know, businesses are not necessarily job creators, big businesses, banks, small businesses. Um, the the purpose of a business is to make money. The way well, to make money is I the, have to tell you, oh, I heard goodness. today somebody said that about job creators. They said they're not job creators, they're profit makers. Exactly. That's what they are. They're 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 job minimizers at at best, but yet we trot out that phrase, job creators, and it's used, you know, to strike fear in, in the hearts of people. Uh, the other some of the political systems, democracy. What is what is democracy? Do we have democracy? How does that compare to communism? How does that compare to socialism? Who who takes the time to get out the dictionary and refer to the classic definitions of these words and their origins? Well, and they they get all skewed because you have economic systems, which are not necessarily types of government. So capitalism and socialism would be an economic system. And then types of governments would be a monarchy, a democracy, those kinds of things. Oh, sounds like we have a caller. Call from John Nerd. To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail, press 2. Good evening, Johnny. You're on the Johnny. air. <laughs> Where's my pizza? I ordered it over 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how you are. Uh, so anyway, let's turn my computer down. The, uh, the, the, you guys were asking just about democracy, and a long time ago it came up with the democracy is only a front for capitalism. And then recently we also laid on that capitalism without a conscience is just exploitation. Uh, you know, and there's, I don't have anything really coherent to say, but uh, yeah, I, I like Pun is like my favorite of, uh, you know, ploy. I'm, I'm big on the wordplay, and uh, I consider myself a little bit of a wordsmith. But uh, I mean, I wish I had something. Uh, I used to. I, I do actually have a list, but it's not in front of me of words that I've made up. Uh, well, or it's, let's it's hear more, a couple. Give actually. us a couple of them with the definitions that you made up to go along with. <laughs> well, a lot of times I just make up a word or I sort of blend two words together, and people can usually tell what I'm. You know, what I'm even though it's not grammatically correct, but you know, if you add something like the EST or the ER to something, you know, well, like Colbert used to do with the truthier or truthiness or something like that, like where it's not a real word, but you can tell what he means. But I don't have any of those. Yeah, and I just have a dirty one that I use with a girl who wants to, and it's a smoppy, and it has to do, should I say it or, or not even? No, <laughs> you know, go nuts. <laughs> Well, we apologize in advance sound, for offending it, anybody. Say, just say if you had if you had your mouth on the and, and applied suction to a, a, a lady's mammalian protuberance <laughs> of a breast there, and you pulled back and told the suction broke, well that would be called a slopkey. <laughs> and, and, uh, you, you could have a double slopkey. Was a very good way to say good morning to somebody. <laughs> there we have the use. The, Johnny Greed reclaiming the language. That was hysterical. <laughs> uh, hey, clearly, do you got this, you got this Titan pad to open up so I can uh, talk to you, too? Uh, we don't you have a pad. Work, that, that's where I do my chat. I'm a secret chatter. I work in the in the Titan pad. <laughs> Dude, thank you for I love that. Say that thing about the democracy again and the capitalism. Right? Democracy is only a front for capitalism. That's how it's been pushed from from America's point of view, or, or how I saw it as being pushed on the world. As, uh, and this is like, you know, I came up with this back in my 20s, and I'm in my mid-50s now, so, you know, not that I was that astute then, it's just, well, maybe I was, I don't know. <clears throat> but it was, you know, we didn't, even now, we don't want true democracy. Yeah, you know, and even, well, I've been to GAs, and God, that true democracy is so, God damn, tedious and boring. <laughs> I can't even participate in those things. Well, I'm happy that they're there. I your fingers up. But just the ability of one person to block like 50 or 100 or if you know, the direct democracy only works on like somewhere around 25 or 150 people. It doesn't work for 1,500, it doesn't work for 5,000, it doesn't work for 15 million or 15, 100 million. I mean, that, it's, <clears throat> but we still have that. Yeah, everybody's voice still needs to get heard somehow. Uh, and, you know, uh, the corporatocracy that we have now is nowhere near democracy. And, uh, like, uh, 
when back when Bush would support dictators and go against people who were democratically elected. You go Chavez them from Venezuela. I was like, no, wait, you're sending death squads out to try and either, you know, seriously the guy to assassinate him or actually assassinate him. One or the other, you know, who even knows? But this is somebody who was democratically elected by his people. That, that's that's democracy. So I mean, but we would rather support dictators that that we agreed with corporate corporate wise or profit wise or capitalistically wise that we were more in line with it than you know, than people who you know, than than the actual tenet of democracy. You know, so it's it's a whole it is very skewed. Yeah. You know, it's that, that new speak from from nineteen eighty four, you know, and you you know, they repeat the lie often enough it becomes the new truth or yeah. It's, it's boggling. And they steal boggling. the language. You know, the word democracy in that example you gave was great because, it, you know, it's a prime prime example to wrap up this segment with. But what popped into my mind when you said that little bit was one man's democracy is another man's tyranny. And the, the, it's right. because the, what they say, you know, democracy is a two wolves and one sheep deciding on what's for dinner. Right. You know, well, it's because the yeah, definition. Yeah, it, it can't just be simple majority rule. It has to be some kind of right. backup system for fair play in 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 you know in play for for fairness in play. But uh, you know, I was talking with a a, a boss on the construction that is a you know, the GC for the job. Who you know we have a good yeah. You know, I mean, he's like three or four levels above me, but we have a good personal relationship. We smile, and he likes the work that we do and stuff like that. But you know, we were talking about the debate that came up. We were having a cigarette break and. Um, you know, he's sort of in the pro Romney camp. I said, well, now, last time I voted for Obama, and I'm not voting for Obama, or you know, I'm certainly not going to vote for, for Romney. But and New Jersey's not a state that's in play. And even if it was, you're the, the not every state where the your general vote counts presidentially wise. It's just about the electoral college. So yeah, I can throw away my presidential vote without having any guilt about swinging things one way or another. But uh, really, Obama and, and Romney are. It's the same team, just, uh, you, you know, it's like two twins who have, like, a, a disagreement about, you know, they, I like red with black checks, left with black with red checks. You know, like, it's the same damn thing. It's just, you know, you guys are just a little bit of difference on gun control and abortion, and, and otherwise you're the same damn pro-corporate party. It doesn't matter. That's true. That's and the other kid's food is just the public. So I, you know, I have the luxury or, or the ability to not have to vote for either of them. I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for, but... I would like to vote for the largest, you know, to, to get, to break that third party barrier instead of having like 20 people getting, you know, they might get 5 or 10% total, but spread out over 20 people, they only get half percent each. But if everybody pulled together and, and had one, you know, if we need one little iceberg the of the, uh, what would it be, the, uh, now I'm getting beeped in. I don't even know that. I'll tell you what, I've monopolized the phone long enough, and i got a phone call coming in, so uh, I'll talk to you guys later, maybe even later in the show. Yeah, so right. thank you for calling, thank you, Johnny, Johnny, for your comments <laughs> and for being a continuous supporter, even though you're pretty quiet about it most of the time. Hey, well, I, no, I saw, actually, I, I sort of had a, uh, I got an honorable mention or something. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the actual OPN supporters on the uh, the website there. Woohoo! So. Yahoo! Right, <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing my name in print. I'm, 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 just, I'm just a media whore, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. And, uh, did that Titan tag get up there? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll be talking to, to anyone who wants to talk with me. I'll be talking to the, 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 the Titan tag later. Okay, thank you. Know, I'll talk to you guys later. All thank right. you, Johnny. Bye bye. Keep it on. That was our friend Johnny, and I wanted to um, let people know it's perfectly fine during the radio show if you want to put up um, you know, some links, and these that um, Indy are putting up are really good, so I appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Claire, for putting us up a, a link. And, um, yeah, I think uh, Johnny likes to use the Titan Pad as his kind of, you know, his, his chat screen, so... Um, you guys want to talk with Johnny? That's a good place, good place to do that. Um, good evening, Barnabas. You know, we we hope we can keep you entertained and informed. So I think um, Johnny kind of gave us the segue into the next segment. You know, we're talking about the uh, politicians and the elections. So I think we'll move on to the next segment. See? Okay, sounds good. I've got it coming up. 
And so our next segment is going to be on the presidential candidates and the debates. So what sparked my interest in doing this segment was actually uh, a week or so ago when I got my ballot in Ohio and I noticed that there were seven candidates on the ballot in Ohio. There was a Libertarian, a Constitution Party, Socialist Party, Democrat, Republican, Green Party, and a non-party affiliate. Now I'm not sure why Rocky Anderson was not on the ballot in Ohio, but I've never seen that before in my state on a voting ballot. There might be one more uh, like third party candidate but I never saw such an influx of candidates and actually since 2006 it seems in Ohio they've been fighting for this right to get on the ballot the Republican uh, House um, passed a law that said you had to meet certain criteria and then the Supreme Court of Ohio overturned that so there's been this ongoing battle for third-party candidates to get their names on the ballot. Um, and it seems that they've won their court cases, and that's why there are so many on the ballot. But why are we not hearing about them in the news? Why do we not know who these people are and what their positions are? Well, it's you know clearly a media blackout, and um, you know this was... This was one of those things, and you know, I get a lot of this from Democracy Now. And so, one of the things I was on, and I'm looking at the link now, is the 21-page uh, secret document agreement released by uh, Mark Halperin, and and we still don't know where he got that, but he's a writer for the uh, for the Times, and there is a memorandum of understanding, and I'm getting the link right now this is about so the debates can, right the right, commission this is the, the presidential the commission. commission on debates yeah the commission for presidential debates and it's so supposed it's, to be a bipartisan group um, but they make this secret contract with the democrats and republicans and one p part of that was to agree to not enter into a debate with any other third party right um no other third party, also limiting the types and frequency of questions that can be asked, limiting the ability of the candidates that did debate to challenge e each other, uh, restricting access to debates by external parties. And the list just goes on, and this thing is 21 pages long, and it's fascinating. Um, they obtained this after repeated conversations with both sides of the campaign and the presidential uh, debate commission um, who swore that such a thing did not exist and so Mark Halperin through some sources got the thing so you know it's amazing but I want to go back to um, so that's one part you know that discusses the debates why we can't get a clear and open debate and well and the fact tonight, that Jill Stein was arrested yesterday trying to get into the debates which to me was so the way that that lady that security lady treated Jill Stein was so disrespectful um, it just blew my mind I'm like she is on the ballot in enough states to get enough electoral votes to win the election and she is just treated like a nobody, like she doesn't even exist in the process. Um, and that, to me, is just one of the, the most horrible things that I've witnessed in the last couple of days. Um, you know, what? so how is it that Ohio can have seven people on the ballot? How is it that North Carolina can have three people on the ballot? How is it that, um, how many do you have in Portland, um, Rice? Do, do, do you know, have you seen the ballots yet? But there's a distinct inconsistently state to state. So how can you have um, an election that allows people to collectively choose the leader? Um, I mean, you would think it's a federal, it's a, it's a nationwide election. So why isn't there a process for the nationwide election that is national 
separate from individual state election processes. And then, you know, within localities and within states, they have their own election process for the people who are representing those areas. Um, because right now, the way it's set up is the states control the um, election. So, um, and does is that state state controls the local boards, and so the ballots all come out of the state offices. So, um, you know, it's just wound up. And then I think in states like North Carolina, which tends to be more conservative, there's different leverage applied than there is maybe in Ohio or California. It's just exactly. really astonishing. Um, it's a really antiquated system because, you know, states' rights are one of these things that are constantly battled between the federal government and the state. But this is a federal election. This is for the entire nation. How come there can't be one defined separate entity for that alone? Um, and why do the states feel like they need to have this power over the national election? Um, maybe it's a state's rights thing. Um, I don't know. but Well, it is um, right now, but right. it's pretty antiquated. I mean, when, when all this process was put together, we only had 13 colonies, <laughs> 13 yeah. states, so... Well, that's um, true. Well, let's talk a little about about the Occupy the Debates thing at Hofstra last night. Um, oh, we yeah. were we were watching some of the streams. You know, Nate was up, Stop Motion was up. Uh, the WikiLeaks truck guy got arrested for filming an undercover cop last night. Um, so you you got yet again suppression of journalists. Um, it I. I didn't get the sense that there was actually uh, a protest there, but there were a lot of people out at Hofstra. Um, I don't know what the crowd sizes were, but it seemed to be a lot of activity all around the discussion. Well, you uh, know what I noticed? <laughs> this is just my own take on what... There were a lot of groups there, and um, kind of fringe groups, and Occupy kind of got drowned out because whoever has the loudest voice in these kind of protests and screaming their their points of view, however crazy they are, um, get the most attention. And it seemed like Occupy was just completely drowned out of the out of the picture. Yeah, I think I they had a, a good contingent, and it just was oh, 300. That's great. Did Suze, so were you you were able to be there did um did was there a, just a lot of you know onlookers not the occupiers that were part of the action but a lot of just citizens that came out because it looked like there were a lot of like supporters and Nate was even saying you know there was a lot of supporters from both sides of the equation um occupy long island led the march and we're, that's a good turnout, 300, 300 people. So yeah, it excellent, is. excellent work there. It wasn't showing up super good in the live on the, streams. It was on the live stream. It was kind of, kind of just confusing. Um, ah, the freedom cage or the the unfreedom cage. The the non. Yeah, the, they had a roped off area for public speaking and public gathering. Well, my observation is if there's a freedom cage for free speech, that means there's no free speech anywhere. So that's good. I'm really glad to hear there were over the the sizable crowd there. So that you must you guys must have been pleased with with that. That's fantastic. Um, so we got Susan. Were, were you able to get out to the to the action? Oh, I got a phone call coming in from unknown number. Michael Cagliotti. Ah. Check that. That's one. Michael. Michael, welcome to OPN. We so love you, Michael. Uh, well, I'm here to send a message to Connie, uh, well, from Connie, that she can't make it on to the show tonight. She's been feeling under the weather, so I guess I'll make a suitable replacement. <laughs> you're you're uh -huh. great. So where are you calling us from today? Uh some really large city in the Midwest. 
Is he on his way back to the East Coast? Are you on your way back to the East Coast, people are asking? Uh, yes. Excellent. Well, we'll be glad to have you back in the promised land. Susan, people are saying hi and sending out best wishes. So, um, Oh, man, let's talk to him a little yeah, bit about his for, experiences. For <laughs> you know, do you want to tell us about your latest adventure and give us the on-the-ground ground view? Because that was quite a story. Um, well, first and foremost, I just want to thank everybody uh, for... Uh, calling up the, the DA's office and letting them know who I am. <laughs> that was uh, really awesome that you guys did that, and uh, I really appreciate it. Well, you know, the, the Chatter and Viewer family were extremely, they mobilized quickly and were extremely su supportive, and I was glad that it had some, some effect because it was a difficult situation you were in, and uh, to be that far away from your normal support system had to be hard, but we're glad you, you weathered weathered that storm and are headed home safely. You know, Mom, and like I said, I, I thank you guys for helping me out. You know, I thank my father for, because my dad was the one who bailed me out. So, you know, uh, most 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 thanks goes to him because he was he's the one who put the money up and he went out to California to get me. So, uh, you know, uh, I thank my father, too. Um, and all the calls and support that I got. So, um, really, it really means a lot to me. Well, you know, people people are glad to do it, and this is how, it, because it's very important that we ban And I realize you probably can't talk a lot about the situation, so we'll just let that pass. But we're, we're grateful you're headed back, and um, we'll just see more of you. And I'm, I'm glad you know you have people out there that are, you know, we, we do watch, and, you know, we want to give a shout out to, to Ping and to Ruby because they they were like the sharp end of the stick there, and um, I think it was just fantastic what they did, and I'm glad it, it helps you out in some way, shape, or form, and I'm really happy, you know, you're, you're headed home. Um, it was a a trying time, so so we appreciate that, and I'm so excited you called in to talk to us. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that I didn't get to stay out longer in California like I wanted to, but you know, uh, I was advised to go home and to go home as quick as possible. Right, right. Well, there you know, it's discretion being the better part of battle. So, also, to, in case that you didn't know, like all the people that were involved. Um, one of our, our our friend channels, you know, Occupy World is now Northern Guy Jim Fair and that crew, they were involved in trying to to help help you out there too. So you had a lot of support and this is important. I think we, we wanna make sure that all the streamers know that support rests out there out there for them. It's important to, to know, you know, there's another part of the team and that you guys shouldn't hesitate to ask for help when you need it and know that people have your back. It's important. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, I started the Polar Report uh, not, not too long ago. It was, I believe during the first week of the DNC I started it. And, you know, I really had a lot of trouble, I felt, getting traction for it because everybody was so used to me hosting Occupied Air. So, um, you know... And it's good to, in a way what happened is that because now everybody knows about the Teller report. <laughs> <laughs> he got publicity. Yeah, you got press, and you know what they say, any press is good press, right? <laughs> yeah, any press is good press. And and for those of you who, who don't know Michael personally, I had the great pleasure and opportunity of meeting him in Charlotte during DNC we chatted a little bit. What a what a stand up guy he is and just, you know, such a good person and it was so disturbing to see what happened to you out there. Um, you totally didn't deserve it, but I'm glad you you got through it and I wish you well and so does everybody else. Um uh, I thank you once again, you know, you have you, done too much. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I really haven't. Now, I, I have to get in one little bit more part here because I'm hoping 
that uh, Ping is listening, even if she's not able to participate. And um, I think it's awesome that you're calling on her behalf. <laughs> so, you know, the wheel goes round, right? It's all like being in a big family. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a lot of harder to see, uh, you know, um, being so far away from home and being on the West Coast where I don't know anybody, but I think it'll really hit home once I go back to New York. Yep, well, good. Well, I hope you have safe travels and take care of yourself and get some rest, and thank you so much for calling in. Oh, ask him if no he needs problem, anything. Though. Oh, yeah. You take care of yourself. Michael, everybody wants to know if you need anything or if there's anything they can do for you now. Um, as of this point, you know, just get my weekday link out there and that's it. Okay. You know, I, I have to, I got to pay the bail bondsman $1,000. So, uh, my father, my father got a break because he's a union guy. So I don't need 3600 I just need 1000 Okay. <laughs> We're putting up your WePay link right now. So. Um, we'll be glad to do that. Um, thanks for calling, man, and thank you for the good work you're doing. You just keep your head up and stay safe. Yeah, I mean, I'll be extremely done soon. I can't tell you how soon I will be, but I'll be up in the, in the near future. Excellent. Thank you. 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 Wow, that was great. That was super <laughs> awesome. That's Michael Pelagotti. And um, can somebody grab his WePay link? It's on the uh, Ustream.tv channel, the Pella Report. Um, if somebody can put that up and bold it, that would be great. We'll try to help out. So I have to say that was that was so so much more interesting than the uh, segment on the, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, segment it was. On the politicians <laughs> because this is Michael's real life, right? And this is what we're trying to do. We're looking at these, you know, national and global issues and trying to bring them down to a human level. So it was so great to hear Michael and we're glad he's um, headed, headed back east. And I want to thank Suze too, if you're still on, um, for helping get us caught up to speed on the Occupy the Debates. Um, it was a good action. I think we need to do more of that. And also, um, Sue's made a good point. You know, when I asked the question um, about the story out there that, you know, probably not good to talk about it because that's still ongoing. So, uh, Michael, I apologize for putting you on the spot, but you handed that, you know, very gracefully and um, I'll try to be more cognizant of that kind of stuff. We have a responsibility to not only um, help share the stories but also recognize the, the time and the place that they would be most effectively and productively shared. So that's a note to myself and a lesson learned. So. Okay, so do we want to get back to what we were talking about uh, as far as the debates and everything? Does anybody have anything they want to share or discuss about Occupy the Debates or the candidates or anything you saw or heard during the debates that was interesting? or? Well, the best thing I there? saw during the debates was the pre-show from Amy Goodman and the post show from Amy Goodman. Which oh, she's been really working. working she is hard really, at it. I encourage everybody. Hey, Lorenzo, welcome. Good to see you. Lorenzo coming at us from East Texas in the blockade country. Are you still in Texas, Lorenzo? Yes, yes and I want to let everybody know that um, I had the great opportunity to talk with Lorenzo and Elizabeth which was uh, really exciting for me, and that they are going to stay around in East Texas and continue covering that story for a while. So, um, you know, we could probably find their WePay link and put that up in bold, too. Um, we want to support all our new media journalists as much as we can. Um, and Lorenzo and Elizabeth, or they were at a point yesterday where, you know, go home or 
you know, stay there to cover some more of the story. And I think they chose to uh, stay from what I understand. So um, any contributions we could scare up to help them meet expenses down there, um, that would be great. And Lorenzo, please do oh, call yeah, in. Oh, yeah, call yeah, in. We, absolutely. A field report from the blockade is much better than the politics. <laughs> I think so, I'm going to change the screen. Yeah, change the screen. Put something, <laughs> something put, out. See, this is good. You know, it's much more interesting when people call in. And, um, yeah, if you if you want to call, that would be great, man. Um, so let's see. While we're waiting for him to call, I'll uh, see if I can't get your WePay linked up. So... So this is call from Florenzo. To accept credit Good evening, sir. You're so chill. It's like call from Lorenzo. <laughs> hey, uh, what's up? What's up? Give me one second here. I'll actually do it. Walk away from the computer. I'm inside. I'm surrounded by a bunch of people. So, uh, you see that? Oh, yeah. That's just break. It almost break something. Uh oh. Hey, so. hey, that was What's good. Up? Man, you went somewhere where it's quiet. Yeah, so I was moving away from, uh, there's some music playing here, man, so I don't want to get away from that. I can get some So, how's it going? It's good. It's good. So, tell us a little bit about, um, what's your, what's your status with Elizabeth in Texas and kind of what's on the near term for you? Well, um, we're still in East Texas. Uh, we're still covering the, the parts of the blockade. I don't know if anyone saw my tweet earlier, but there was uh, two people who were arrested today at the wall, the wall to the south. Uh, from what I'm hearing, um, it was just some folks who had decided to come down. But uh, I guess it's not verified yet. But this place here is two, two arrests and more information is coming. And uh, besides that, the blockade is continuing. There's still people in the trees. They're still basically stopping the pipeline from going into the ground by being there. And uh, yeah, and for Elizabeth and I, we were planning on heading back and I just thought we were a little drained even down the road for a while and maybe this was time to go back or just you know just do close calls whatever mm-hmm. but then I don't know it's the opportunity to to stay longer and you know it, it seems like this campaign here in Texas isn't going anywhere you know it, it's going to continue to grow and change and it'd be nice to be there for it so we just kind of decided we'd try to stick around a little bit longer and we're already a day a day longer than we were before you know so we're going to leave today and like we just keep looking at each other like, well, we're here. So, yeah. yeah. So, basically, that, that's where we're at, I guess. That's a, a really strong action down there. I mean, it's really impressive, the numbers of people and what you're accomplishing. And it's so great that the two of you are down there to help get that story out. Um, are there any other uh, journalists or streamers down there reporting out of it? Um, there's no streamers. I know that uh, Occupy Freedom LA, uh, we've been talking a lot, and she is trying to find a way over here as well. And so I've been uh, just trying to help just at least get her in contact with people or just facilitate that in some way, and then or help facilitate that. And then um, besides that, there's, there's a lot of, like, on, on the action on Monday, if you actually look, you can actually, like, do old, you know, Carson's blockade. There's a lot of articles that are written from that action. And that was because there's actually a lot of people who, who are writers and press people who are embedded in the action. Like, there's a lot of media on Monday. It does, if you look at the video that came out of that day, it was, you know, a lot of people with cameras, uh, you know, covering the action. So, out uh, of that came a lot of articles, and, you know, they, they are what they are, so they're really good, and they're just, you know, whatever. But, you know, you can look and you can see it as a guy. There's definitely media being produced here uh, talking about what's happening, and, you know, obviously, I think reaching further and further longer the, um, the blockchain continues. Right. It's it's an important story, and, you know, um, last night when we spoke, I, I had told you I was watching the debate, and later on, after we had spoke, they started talking about, you know, energy, etc., and they were, they were like, okay, I'm going to... St- I'm going to prevent this, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And, oh, yeah, we're we're going to work it out so we can build this pipeline. And I'm like, they're already building the damn pipeline. You know, we know we have people there. We yeah. know it's being done already, even though it hasn't been approved or anything. 
it's crazy and thank goodness you guys are down there because that's the man that's the happening happening thing and it's it's just evil and corrupt and just it's terrible and how are the the locals in the area i know some of that seems to be dancing around on private property and stuff like that how are people responding about that i mean can you speak to that i mean i mean i can speak to i mean obviously it's everywhere i mean some people who of course don't want anybody on their property you know do but there's actually you can actually again look this up on google and you can find a lot of um with well, i think it's you specifically monday there was a, a texas property owner that the tar sands had uh, i'm sorry trans canada had put the pipeline through her her property, and she was there at the action at the front of it in support. And I was able to interview her. I think it's the last video, but of course my stream has been really terrible out of there. But I think the audio is okay. And basically, you know, she she's very supportive. And I asked her specifically, like, do you support this blockade? Which you know, it's, it's very clearly like civil disobedience, like nonviolent civil disobedience to the T. You know, it's there. It is. You know, blockades there, draw lockdowns all there. And um. And she's like, yeah, of course. Like, I, I, these people are all in my heart. I think she said and was like, explained that, that you know she completely agrees with them. And she's a, a landowner who this is directly affecting. And so, but then again, there are other people who, you know, the the, the issue that I think one of the issues is that it's kind of ignored is that what's happening in East Texas is, and, and even though it's corrupt and disgusting, and, and you know we say all these things about it, is actually done within a legal framework that exists, right? So like they actually are given the right to be able to take the land away from Texas landowners and somehow through what the, the framework that exists, it's, it's legal, it's fine, it's okay. And so I think people struggle with that, but some people want to say, well, it's all legal. And then other people are like, well, yeah, I guess, but it's, you know, it's also really messed up that we're giving you know this land to a foreign corporation and we're giving them access to our resources you know, by taking them away from you know, American citizens or United States citizens. Uh, but it's... It's a pretty astonishing situation in the scope and the scale of it down there. And I was wondering, because we talked about this a little bit, can you describe the area you're in? You know, you touched on the fact that it's hard to get a stream out of there, and we were talking about the, the geography and the location. Let Just kind of give pe people a picture well, of the area. Well, um, right now I'm actually not near the area. I actually kind of like... I'm giving us space to kind of unwind because we're like stuck in the trees and get all this stuff. And so, okay, kind of like right now we're, we're not near there, but when, when you are, like it's literally about maybe a, a 20 minute drive from a city into uh, just kind of wilderness, you know. <laughs> and so you're driving, and if you drive along the road, you know, you, you'll see the star land and the pipeline is going through. But the nearest town is probably about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes away, maybe 40, you know, it's, it's, it's a drive. And so you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and there's really no service. And so it's really difficult to get anything out of there. And we're working on it, uh, you know, still. And now that we're staying here, like Elizabeth and I have been talking a lot about, like, different strategies and different, you know, things we can do to, you know, kind of increase um, this coverage in, in the live stream area, you know. So but it is, you know, it's just wilderness woods. If you if you look at any of the streams or pictures, you can also go to the blockade.org site, and they have a flicker page, and you can look at all the pictures, and you can kind of get a sense of what the place really looks like. And it's basically like a cut through that's being leveled off. All the trees are now taken out and derooted. And it's, it, it, then it runs into a, a stand of trees. And the trees are, you know, it's like a forest. You know, it's just, and it's, it's like surrounded in an island right now. They try to move a, a road alongside of it to get machinery through. And then some of the like, blockaders back in there are trying to move the pipeline around. But now that's in contention. contention. They're not really sure if they're, they're trying to or not. And it's also become really clear if they want those people to come down. You know, like they haven't moved away from that point. But I'm like, you know, we are going around, so we're going to ignore you. Like, they're, they're very much set up watching the, the tree set 24 hours a day. So it seems like the, the, they really, you know, want to take that part down. But outside of that, you know, it's, it's just wilderness. There's a, you know, it's, you know, you have to crawl through the woods. There's, there's gravel all over the place. But, like, I had a lot of stretches on my arm from Monday. We're just, like, running into, like, these deserted trees. And so, you know, it's, um, it's wilderness. And it's wilderness, I can say. So it's, it's always funny when, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out how, you know, I'm just trying to get something out. And someone's like, oh, your connection is so terrible. And I'm like, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. You know, like, it's literally not next to anything. So. Well, I think it's, you know, it's important that people understand understand that because there are some challenges of working in a remote area like that. And um, the fact that you're able to accomplish what you're doing uh, you and Elizabeth are—it's incredible, actually. I mean, it's—it's—it's it's, 
you know, I think it's one of the best examples of streaming, you know, on a scene with an action that's far away from the eyes because, you know, it's it's a big difference than streaming in a major city where there's a lot of eyes. If you guys weren't down there and getting these these this news out, who would know what's going on? I mean, it's incredible effort, and I'm super glad that you guys are able to do that. Um, and I want to encourage the, um, the chatters and viewers to get the message out there. We're putting up a few links. You know, we're putting up the donation links. Also, um, I see Elizabeth on. I was wondering if Elizabeth, if you have easy access to the article that Lorenzo wrote, if you could put that link up. I really enjoyed reading that. Your, your account of the, you know, the arrest days and all the details around me. That was so well written and such a, such a, a great first person story that was done in a measured manner that was extremely educational. So if um, we can get that link up, that will be be great. Um, yeah, that's, that's the other thing, too, is we're, we obviously we're, we're, we're both trying to, like, media, video-wise, you know, like, I was listening to a lot of shooting on just, like, a, you know, camera capture video that way. But also, like, we've, you know, been talking a lot about, you know, both of us doing the Ryan's blog, and she wants to start doing that, so like, we can produce more and more, I think, the, the key, of course, is always to like, throw it more out there, hopefully that somebody likes it and can pass it on, you know. We can hear about what's going on and hopefully take curiosity and start searching and digging and realize that there's, you know, this whole bank of information about, you know, the KXL pipeline, uh, the business and stuff that's going through it, and, like, what's happening here at East, uh, East Texas where, you know, landowners are basically fighting to keep their land and also, you know, a group of actors can come together to build this literal blockade against the expansion of the pipeline. Um, do you think, like, in the time you guys have been down there, have you seen an increase of uh, participation in um, protesters and people becoming involved in that struggle against that particular? Well, yeah. Because it seems like the numbers well, are growing. Yeah, I think that's just clear. I think that um, uh, one of the articles I tweeted out earlier was uh, actually ended with a, a quote from a one of current fans Canada representative who was like, oh, you know, we are worried about the blockade. And then they're like, do you think it's going to keep going? Do you think it's going to grow? And then I heard you know, talking about, like, our answer was on Monday when this action happened where there was way more people than there had been before, like, showing that, like, yes, it is growing, this resistance is a real, like, tangible thing. And so I, I think that, yeah, you know, obviously, like, based on just that action alone, like, it's obviously getting bigger. More people are realizing that you can see, like, the fact that they're touching different news agencies where, like, they're becoming more and more talking points where they're like, oh, we have to talk about this because it's, it's this thing that's happening in this country, you know? Right. Um, I, I have to say the tarsandsblockade.org uh, people are really, really good at messaging and getting the information out there. They're, they're a pretty strong force. Um, did, did you realize, you know, a, a year and a couple of months ago, like early on in Zuccotti, that you would literally be up a tree in East Texas trying to get a story out? I mean, I don't think that, that, I mean, I can't speak for Elizabeth, but I know that I personally, I mean, I didn't even realize that until I was in the tree, and then there was like suddenly, like, we we're stuck, and I was like, okay, so this is what's really happening now. And so, I mean, no, I mean, it, I didn't really think about it. <laughs> that, that clearly, I was just like, I want to go here, and I want to see what's happening, and I want to tell people, and that was kind of like the thought process, and so I'm like, oh, but like, I'm literally doing this for, like, in the, the tree, and now I'm stuck here, and, you know, and that just kind of, it just all kind of happened. Yeah. It's probably been like my last year and a half of life. Is that like all these things just kind of happening as as I've participated. Like I remember uh, Knock by Wall Street. The first definition they were trying to say was that it, it wasn't a it wasn't a thing that was static. It was like a living thing. It was a verb. It was an action. Right? So it was like constantly changing. And I think that that kind of almost equates to what you know my life has been like so far with all these things constantly happening and, and me having the, the privilege to be able to be involved and to be able to help in whatever way I can. Right. Well, uh, I have a lot of respect for you and Elizabeth and the work you're doing. And, you know, the people need, need to realize this is physically and emotionally and mentally grueling. I mean, they're in the woods, up a tree, you know, under duress. It's, it's a tough, tough situation. And you guys are performing it so professionally with so much grace 
and and it, dignity. It just it is, and you're doing it without sensationalizing it, which I think makes it even more important. You're just saying, here it is. Here's the deal. This is what's happening, and you allow people to be intelligent enough to make their own choices and decisions. And I, I just I think it's the shining example of what we can be doing. So thank you for that. Yeah, I want to say quickly, like, I mean, a lot of that was, like, you know, saying that week up there, there was one person up there who, who basically said that, you know, they, they told us that, you know, that, that this, this, this wasn't a spectacle. It wasn't, it wasn't a spectacle. I mean, I think it was in my article how, you know, we have, we, our, our forms of protest are a lot based around this idea of spectacle where you, you gather a bunch of people and you march and try to be as loud as possible. People look at you and, you know, your message gets out and you go home and it's basically trying to, Garner this this messaging and and how this is not you know this person was saying this is not you know that and this is like the real thing like, we've come here and just you know to, to stop this pipeline and the other way like at least I as they said they felt they could do is by getting in front of it you know it's, it's simple it's that simple you get in front of it and so yeah you know it, it, it does feel very tangible and, and you know as you said like a real thing where it's like folks are taking the risk on to because we put themselves in front of this kind of upcoming disaster as you know it's worded right. Well, you know, thank you for doing that. And it's really great to have you call in and share it with us. And we we want you guys to be strong and be safe and, you know, take as good a care of yourself and each other as you can. And we'll try to, you know, stir up some more support so you can uh, keep on doing the good work. And I wanted to get a shout out to Elizabeth. I see her in the chat. Thanks for joining us tonight. It was great. Great to hear from you last night. Um, and you guys are just, you know, we're so proud of you. Like, this makes my heart swell up. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you all. Is there any uh, questions from the chat? I can't see it right yeah, now. Yeah, if anybody um, wants to ask questions, I'll read them off. Yeah, and I was going to say, too, that, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. There's, yeah, there's also been a lot of work here, and, you know, we, we definitely, like, try to look at or try to pass on the links that you're seeing and, and pass them on. You know, starting conversations with friends. So honestly, this is like an issue that seems to hit everyone very, very hard and very uh, uh, kind of like way where it's very understandable. You know, like what's happening is, is obviously not right, and you know the the, the opportunity and ways to stop it are, I mean, basically it's trying to get as many people involved wherever they're at as possible. From what I've been hearing, and of course, this blockade is going to continue, and the campaign seems to be like, like I said, like growing from like the experience on Monday. And, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. We're all gonna, you know, I think we're going to stick around for a while and do what we can to keep, you know, letting this be an accessible action and accessible to as many people as possible. Okay, we got a we got a couple of questions. Ruby wants to know, how were you able to keep streaming when you had, you were in handcuffs behind your back? <laughs> oh, no, I, luckily I, I've been given a, a pretty nice case for the, what I was doing for stream. And I also think, you know, it's probably a give up the whatever. Well, I don't think that the, the, the police officers already don't have a lot of experience with dealing with this sort of like sort of like media people who are like videotaping and also you know streamers in particular like I think it's, it's, it's not as though there's a lot of people streaming in East Texas in the middle of the woods and so I just don't think they, they thought about it and so I just kind of put the phone into the case that I was wearing on my chest and just kind of let it keep going and yeah you know, it worked out okay that's awesome Despite the, <laughs> the blurriness was kind of rough but and Indy is asking, how are you dealing with the stress and going forward on this project? Um, you know, I think that, again, I feel right now we kind of like stepped out for a day or two and are, are getting rest. And I think that, uh, luckily, the people around me to remind me to do that. And so I just, you know, let's try to take it as, as easy as we can. And I know, like, Elizabeth and I were having conversations about how to continue covering this. And I was like, well, we got to be there every day. And then, and then you know, like, oh, we did that already. It's like, we got to be there in ways that, you know, supportive and also, like, intelligent instead of just trying to be there all the time. I think that's kind of like, almost, it's almost impossible in this situation. But, of course, you know, you want to try to do it. But, um, I don't know, just trying to, like, take the time out and, and really hopefully look at where we are, like, physically and, and mentally, which, Oh, it's just hard when you get involved in like campaigns that are so exciting like this. You know, like covering this has been very exciting, and right. you, you know, people are getting away from it. Well, that's a that's a good good choice, and I think part of that is just from from your past experience. You know, the necessity of finding that balance point because you've you've done it the other way, and just 
run out. You you can't you can't be any good to anybody if you're completely worn out. So I'm really glad to hear hear that. Um, a lot of people are saying thank you for doing an important job, and they all want us to tell you we love him and E and to stay safe. And um, just thanks for everything. Are there any more questions from the chat? If you want to throw them up, that would be great. And you're, uh, we have you know, the OPN channel running, of course, and you're also up on Occupy World News now. So if you, if you have yeah. anything you want to throw out for Oh, no, just, you know, it's, 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 I, I'm as glad it is, uh, you know, I'm just turning towards Texas right now and, and really trying to, like, dig into what's happening here and realizing that, you know, it is, it is, it is, it's very confusing, you know, like there's, there's trans Canada screening off police officers to basically patrol the, the tree set and, and ordering them to arrest people when they want to order them. And, you know, all these things are, are really occurring here. And, and it's, you know, I'm just glad that people are picking, I'm picking it up and be able to see it and be able to access this information. You know, I, I know it's one of the attitudes of a global revolution and I was like, like, it was like, you know, trying to make sure nothing remains hidden. And I think that at the very least, like we're, we're doing our best to do that. And, and so, as you, know, you mentioned, the media team here, like they're they're extraordinary, and they're working really hard too to make sure it's, you know content and and the story exists every day, and people can access it and see it building. And if you go to that that website, the live blog every day is being updated about what's been happening. And, and you know, that's, that's a lot of work they're doing too. And of course, people on the ground, like it's it's pretty it's pretty incredible to be here. And I mean, that's really all I can say. You know, like, again, like, it's just a privilege to be able to stay here. And, again, a lot of a lot of that had to do with the support we got to get here. And again, like thank you for everyone who helped. Who helped. You know, the decision was really simple. It was like if anybody donated to us coming, we, I would go. Or at least for me coming, I would go. And I got one donation. I was like, all right, I'm going. And here we are. And you know, it's working out. And now the story is getting out there further and further. And like I can't say what facets we are to that, but it's good to be part of it. Well, much respect, much love, and you guys take care of yourself. And thank you for calling and stay in touch thank you we'll Lorenzo exactly. we'll help you get your story out um, you can't you can't hear Senna in my headphones but she wanted me to tell you thank you and we appreciate you calling in and all the work you're doing give Elizabeth a hug from us and take care alright sounds good y'all take care too and I'll hope you talk I, I dominated that discussion. You can't talk on the phone. So well, talk. I was muted for a while because Ed came into the bedroom and spilled an entire glass of iced tea on his by his computer and all the cords and everything. <laughs> so I, I had to mute and go help clean up a mess. <laughs> Um, well, so I missed a lot of it, but what I heard was wonderful. It was really great to have Lorenzo and Michael call in tonight. That was really right. a special treat. And Elizabeth was on the, on the chat, so you know we've yeah. been. This is this is a wonderful example of what the call-in show can be like because uh, we want to talk about with with what is interested interesting to you guys. So we have no problem with going down a tangent especially when we get opportunities to talk to people who are on the ground and doing the good work exactly. so, um, we're, I would we're love it if we could put um, see we got Lorenzo's donation up right quick let's let's put Michael's up again please if somebody can scroll up and copy and paste that thank you so much for for calling in Al that was uh, great to hear from you um, so we're at the the nine o'clock hour, so we we've done our hour. Um, if anybody else, has that hour they went want, too fast. <laughs> that hour was going slow until until Johnny and Michael <laughs> and know. Lorenzo called in, and then we had something. You know, <laughs> it, it just goes goes to show. You know, it's so much better. You guys make the show. We don't make exactly the show. Right. <laughs> We just start the show. We create the environment. So. Exactly. So we want everybody to call in. We want to hear everyone's voices. Yep. Feel free um, to do that. And we really want to hear from you. Lots of people in this chat we haven't heard from on our radio show yet. So. Yep. You know, like, I think, you know, Susan Maui would be great to talk to. Susan. From, from the far far reaches of the Pacific, so we don't need no stinking format. That's exactly <laughs> right, Ruby. We, we ride the waves that come to us. I, I want, to, want to tell you. Um, so, Z, why don't you see if you can scare up a panel for next week? 
Oh, yeah. We need a, uh, people for a panel discussion next week. Oh, we've got a call. This is Johnny calling in. Call from John Mead. To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail, press 2. Johnny, you're back on again. <laughs> yeah, I never go away. <laughs> uh, so I was just going to say, you guys go to 20 minute segments. These 15 minutes, you know, it's, it's just not enough. For, if you're picking a viable subject, it takes 20 minutes, 25 minutes to go through. You know, you got to have, you got to be kind of occupied time or Grateful Dead kind of time. <laughs> it's, it's not over till it's over. I think you, you have know? a good point there. That's exactly right. Uh, it, 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 but, you know, I tell you what, if you run out of time and you didn't get to the subject, you carry the subject over. Yep. I was waiting to hear your Detroit shit, or stuff, rather. Stuff. <laughs> Detroit shit, that was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a, a, a roommate from Detroit. And, uh, yeah, he's a, a car musclehead kind of guy, and I would be thinking of my, my ex-roommate Ray from upstate New York. How you doing, Ray? Love him so. I, uh, anyway, I'll just shout out to Ray. He's not going to listen to his, you know. <clears throat> Well, we'll put Detroit on stack for next week. But this is a good point why Johnny's on, on, on the line here. I want to tell you guys, this this show will be so much better with whatever participation you guys bring to it, whatever topics you bring to it. And we're not, we're not locked in to an hour-long format, and we're not locked in to 15-minute segments. It's just our point of departure. Um, so don't right. hesitate. A skeleton to hang, the, to hang the, the musculature upon, but you never know when something grows like a cancer. You just got to adapt with it. That's all. Yeah, that's it. And, and we're, we're glad glad to do that. So um, good point, and I thank you for making it. And we'll get in Detroit next week. How's that? Hey, whatever works for you, boss. I'm here <laughs> for you. You know you got it. You know. But one more out loud pitch here, uh, and hopefully I'll, I'm bringing you up in front of the whole the whole people there, the whole world of, of the people that matter to you. When's this stuff going to get archived? When can people just click on it and get the ar- the audio for this stuff? Well, look, it oh, is we do that. broadcast. It is a little complicated, so I'm behind on the ones I produce, but Z is much oh, better. I- it's on our YouTube okay. channel. You know, our we YouTube. should make podcasts out of it, though. Well, I can make podcasts. So I'll, I can do podcasts. Well, it's, if it's something that I can link to without having to sign up to, you know, that's, you know, it's my... That's YouTube not, is a good place. My paranoia is kind of useless now because I'm sure that we're all on the list of whoever is making those damn lists. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, my, my, my anonymity is actually defunct already. So, fuck you guys. I don't wait for them. F them. F them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and so, but, uh, hello, alphabet agencies. <laughs> right, right. That's the, uh, the A to Z show. And you guys are A and Z, and those guys are the rest of the alphabet in between there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, and I'll I'll get serious about the archives. I'm actually Z and I've been talking, and and I've had so many irons in the fire. I'm starting to back some of them out so I can spend more time on the stuff and do it better. So uh, I hear you, and also for for any chatters out there who don't want me have don't want me calling in like two or three times a damn show, you know, call in yourself. Yeah. That's you know, it's. I'm just here to try and cover our chances. <laughs> you know, I really feel for the man. <laughs> Johnny gets tired of hearing me talk, so he's going to chime in. So I no, it. it's not like that at all. Just, you only talk to me online. Hell, you don't even answer my damn emails, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> but I get, I get you in online. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now, I know you're a busy man, but this is when I get you on, on, the, on the attention here. Hey, I'll, I'll let you straight shout out to... You know, Lorenzo and E for doing the, the Tarzan thing. And it's part of the morphing of Occupy. And we are everywhere. This is the new media. And it's more than just that. This is part of the, the whole social paradigm shift. And, and this is not, it's not quite ground zero because it's, grand, it's, a, it's a grassroots thing. And it spreads up. It's a thousand blades of grass or a million blades of grass going off not just one lawn or one prairie or it's not even just one country anymore. It's, just, it's coming up everywhere because the the main thing, the, 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 the system that's in place is no longer, it's irrelevant. It's become, it's making itself irrelevant and, and it's either going to get bypassed and we're what's going to bypass it or we're what's going to warn it to become relevant again. And either way, it's good for the world general, think about the whole world, but let's talk about the, the human general population. This is good for us. To, to, you guys are cutting edge, front line, getting it done out there, and you, 
you got all my support, and I know everybody else out there has it too, but just love love you, all you guys. But, uh, everybody, we do what we can. Some of us go do some things, some of us do way more than others. As long as we all do what we can, and we don't just step aside and, 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 and say, oh, somebody else will pick up the ball. Everybody has to pick up the ball sometime. And when it's your time to do the ball, don't question, just do. That's all. <laughs> question just do thank you so much buddy and we all got capes and mine would say wingmaster if you w with an m <laughs> I, I, I am the wingmaster and and, and 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 buffalo hot sauce would be my secret power <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you buddy have a good evening thanks for calling again right. johnny everybody out there well, love you all and, and great action out, out there on long island and just i can't even say how much I feel alive. I feel alive. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a good Ta -ta. night. Bye. Yes, bye-bye. Yeah, well, that was about seven kinds of awesome right now. <laughs> Yeah, it was. You know, he's, so, um, you know, I see we have some more people jumping on, and here's Seuss could call and tell us, you know, some more details about um, the – the Occupy the Debates, if you wanted to, and we get a, a nice color spectrum here, here in the chat stream. Um, I see Neb Girls on, Neb. and uh, Neb's on, so I think uh, I might be stepping in it because I'm not going to look at my, I'm not going to look at the Facebook. I'm going to just jump out here. So this is uh, open invitation for Neb Girl to correct me if I misspeak. But I do believe we will be interviewing the world famous Neb Girl on uh, November the 4th, which is Sunday, November 4th, at uh, 8 p.m. our time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yay, Neb. How's that work, Yay. Neb? Is that, is that good? Did I do that? I mean, we haven't even planned it yet. We've just been um, exchanging some emails. Uh, or some Facebook messages. So, Neb Girl on OPN at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern, November 4th. So we're looking forward to that. Um, that might work. May have to be a week after. Okay, well stay tuned. But we're going to have Neb Girl on soon. <laughs> awesome. So, um, but thank you for put Neb's website. Up, I mean her her Facebook site one of you that would be great um, she's into a lot of things that are pretty much extraordinary um, that work right into our focus on localism and you know I'm thinking in my um, you know trying to, to get my arms around some of this stuff so I do better and uh, this is going to be news to Z but um, I, I, yeah ruh -ruh. <laughs> um, I think you know if, if I can focus down on um, food, shelter, and education, that's enough to keep anybody busy. So, um, you know, Neb's, Neb kind of touches on all those spots, so it'll be a great interview. Um, Occupy gardening. Wait. Yay, Suze, you want to call in or, or no? Is it too late? It might be a little bit late, um, but would love to hear some more about the uh, Occupy the Debates and uh, we'll get in some, it's, you know, it's the gardening, the fall gardening season, so we're going to get some of that on. Um, we're working on an interview now with <coughs> a, um, oh great, yeah, so call and I'll answer up. Well, we're I'll just tell you, I got two green beans out of my garden this two year. Two green beans. Two green beans. beans. And I froze them. <laughs> free the world. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I'll fill up the air time. Um, so we'll get Sue's two green beans. Yeah, buddy. You know, <laughs> two organic green beans. She's, so. she's ready for the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My garden was such a colossal failure this year. Well, you know, one of the things that I did when I was in Detroit was went to all the, the community gardens. Uh, well, not all of them. I mean, there's so many of them. But um, the Detroit story is, is really really interesting um you know i've never been to a city that 
was under that situation before and I, you know z if you can, did you save that graphic that you have on right now and we'll come back to it when Sue's calls but I can talk about Detroit while we're waiting for her to get organized uh, you um, want me to put Detroit up if you can do it without losing that all that cool graphic stuff that you just did yeah oh well here's here's Sue's calling in now so. all right call from Sue to accept press one Depend good evening Sue you're on OPN Okay. Hi. <laughs> how, how are you? I'm, I'm good. That was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sitting here. I, I'm in the, I, I, I don't know. I've got my son over here on this side, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. You know, it's really interesting of what you were just talking about, Mark, when you wanted to start narrowing down your focus on some of the things that, how you want that the direction of the channel. And the reason you why that was interesting to me is because I was just thinking about that the other day. I had a long conversation with Sherry about um, you know, how we're all involved with this movement. It's been over a year. And, you know, not everybody can do it all. And how you have to kind of just narrow your focus or else you're just going to know a lot, a little I'm bit crazy. about a lot of things. But it's better to know a lot of things about fewer things. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, it it was Amy Goodman said something like that in one of the talks, and she said one of the trouble with pundits is that there are mm -hmm. people who know so much about so little, you know, or mm -hmm. so little about so much. But anyway, same same thing, right? So right. Just talking so, points. Right. It's you know it's it's more like um, you know I'm on my island and I I wanted to get in there yesterday and. There were things that happened with my son that I wasn't able to make it in there, and oh. um, I was in Palo earlier, and the uh, GI was all, oh, I'm so sorry, and, you know, it doesn't really make a difference to me. I mean, it makes a difference. I would have left to have been there, but the fact that anybody becomes involved in anything is what really has to happen. I've always been a proponent of getting involved locally. Um, and quite honestly, the debate, debates and even the presidential elections, for that matter, really doesn't mean a rest behind for me at all. Uh -huh. um, because I think that we need to become involved locally. Right. Well, you know, I I agree, and we've had that conversation before too. And I think all the all the good stuff is going to come come locally. But you did a lot of work in helping to to make that event happen yesterday. I know. And did um, have you have not really? It was more Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking any credit here. Sherry did a ton of stuff. Um, it was you know this, this, this is part of what she does or had done preoccupy for other organizations. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm not going to try to take credit for something, but what I am very excited in is uh, us doing a lot of things locally on Long Island. Uh, Occupy the East End, storefront, Occupy Long Island. I think you guys probably saw our sign out there. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot of great stuff on the island. Yeah. We're working locally. Um, you know, we're, we're you know, when we deal in live stream and, and, and chat arena, you know, it's a very narrow window of opportunity to bring put people on board. Um, but when you start doing things locally and in real life person, you know, the, the audience you have is so much more, and the possibilities are so much more. So, yeah, that's where I'm really at with all of this. Yeah, because you get to real, make a real tangible difference person to person, and it's it's physical. It's not in, in the ether. So, well, you know, I don't think it's so much that, Mark. I think it's more along the lines that your audience is there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here trying to do things with OPN and you know everyone's doing it in order everyone's trying to do what they're trying to do but there's a very narrow window of opportunity um, to draw people in and have a conversation right. and I think that what people need to understand is that they have the ability to have that conversation within their community every single day whether you're at the grocery store or at the gas station or walking your dog or or anything, um, you know, you you have that 
arena, and people should start taking advantage of it. Uh, I think that's a really good point, and you also just said like half a dozen things that each of us can do in our in our own neighborhoods. Um, has the um, stuff around Long Island? Do you feel like uh, you guys are are gaining some steam and and uh, you know making? Is the community coming together and, and growing, and the participation is that growing as far as the things you're trying to accomplish? I think that what it is is that any time any type of awareness, whether you know you have the Occupy tag attached to it or not makes a difference. Um, you know, I myself, you know, this had really nothing to do with, with storefront or anything, had nothing to do with anything. Uh, you know, I, I've been speaking with Food Net Farms, not on a continual basis, but, uh, you know, I had had conversations with them, and there are um, some local, smaller, privately owned businesses, food businesses, restaurants, and a big place that, uh, you know, they're now working with Food Net Farms because we have a chapter of Food Net Farms on Long Island. So I think that it's the awareness, um, you know, it's the awareness that people need to bring to their life. They need to bring, they need to know what, what is going on locally in their communities and make a difference. It doesn't that Occupy doesn't have to be written all over it. It's just, you know, helping your, helping your community. That's a, that's a good, good point. Um, when I did the interview with the Firestorm people, out of that over the last few days, we <laughs> It was funny because we were all saying the same same thing, just what you said. It's like, oh, you're doing this? I didn't know this. Oh, you know this person? Can this person help us do this? And, like, so we went, um, we, we've knitted together in just a few short days people from across four counties. That that's coalition building, and that's one of the things that I've learned from Sherry uh, and how to do that. Um, and this is what, you know, one of the things, like, you know, with the debate, a lot of things that Sherry was doing that was so wonderful was that, again, from her previous experience within, you know, the nonprofit arena specifically, um, you know, pulling together different organizations for basically a common cause. Not everybody has to agree on who should be president or whether they want to vote or anything like that. It's building together um, a coalition of organizations that understand that they have the capability and ability to bring people together for a common for uh, awareness, for involvement, that you do have a voice, that, you know, it's that it's that thing, the people united will never be defeated. So, yeah. that's, you know, people need to understand that. A good point. I'm, I'm guessing that you, you talked to Sherry today. Was she pleased that? It last night. Oh, she's very pleased. Tired, tired, but pleased. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, she had to yeah, be tired. tired but pleased. That's a that's pretty. So I, I was glad it turned out so well. So good job on all you guys, and it's it's wonderful to hear you and the, the things you're working on. So great. I'm glad you called in. Yeah, it's good speaking with y'all. Um, I said y'all. <laughs> I've been hanging around. I've been hanging around with you too long. Yeah. Okay, it's um, show looks good. I'm glad that everybody's in here. I'm really excited to hear Nab in the next couple of weeks. And it was very. I, I spoke to Lorenzo earlier. Um, um, wait, I was surprised that he had called in, but I was very happy that he did. Um, and they're really doing. And I, I can't impress upon everybody enough how, how they're really. Elizabeth and Lorenzo are really doing a wonderful job. Um, down where they are, they, they need our support. King and Rube did a phenomenal job. I wasn't online that day. I was getting phone calls from saying on my cell phone. Um, so it was just, um, it, was, it was a great job. I'm so happy that everyone's supporting them, and I know that they really appreciate it. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I can't, you know, repeat that enough, too, that the work that, that uh, Lorenzo and Elizabeth are doing down there is so important. I actually we 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 broke our piggy bank and sent them all our quarters because that's yeah a, that's yeah a they're doing great. Thing. Well, you know, I was offline for about a week and a half. I, I took a little bit of a break, and when I came back on, I you know <laughs> the first thing I see is Lorenzo and Elizabeth are up in a, a goddamn tree. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> they're confident. I had no idea 
what they were. I really didn't know. So, yeah. Um, you know, and then when I finally got in touch with them and we were talking, I'm like, what do you mean you're on a damn tree? Because, you know, I, I get about those two. I'm like, well, you're in a goddamn tree. What the hell are you doing in a tree? But they were, um, yeah, they were, it's, um, they're doing great stuff. And I just, we, we all know that they're going to keep it up and they're going to keep on doing it. I just hope that the support, um, the support comes continues because they, they sure need it the kids that they're working their ass off yep yep all all of them are and it's so impressive and so inspiring so well thank you for yep. calling in dear and yeah. you know take care and stay well you as well all thanks right. Suze bye bye so that, that was, was our very own Suze Q Suze. reporting in from Long Island which was uh, sounded pretty good she made some great great points um, how we can you know, focus down and do our stuff locally, which is so important, you know, person to person and face to face. So um, I think should we go ahead and kind of wrap it up for the night there, Z? Yeah, I think I think we're ready to do that. It was a great show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, I love um, the spontaneous stuff. <laughs> yeah, so keep that in mind. If anybody has ideas on topics they would like us to cover, uh, put it up on the um, on the pad it clearly has. Um, if anybody has uh, a chance, if you could cut and paste Lorenzo and Elizabeth's donation link again and also Michael Pelagotti's, that'll be great. We want to close the show out with some support for them um, even if you can't contribute you know pass on that information pass on those sites 